Hey guys, how's it going? So today Aaron and I are heading down to the garden center because they just got their first load of trees in yesterday. And I know that it kind of looks like the time of year when we're not supposed to be looking at trees, but Aaron and I are gonna go down and we're gonna start tagging some trees for the new property in particular, um, because we really wanna focus on getting some big shades started over there. And we know it's gonna take several years to get it there. So that's kind of priority number one, that and getting the lawn started. So uh, my mother-in-law is here watching the kids and we should have a real, nice relaxing time looking at trees it looks really cold out here but it's not not super bad 30 degrees <laughs> it doesn't feel really bad out here no it feels awesome yeah it feels nice. i run really hot all the time anyway so whenever we have cool temperatures i can be out here in a sweatshirt and just be like oh not for very long though i need to go grab my coat out of the studio just in case just in case we end up staying outside longer than i think we're going to Yep, the snow is melting. I would not want to be standing underneath this roof when that snow falls. <laughs> Cheddar. Okay, pretty sure I left it in here. Yep, there it is. Cheddar, you're not supposed to be in the studio. Nope, 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 you digging my plants. So you have lost privileges. Can't be around my seedlings. Oh, Aaron's fixing the windshield wipers. I broke one of them off yesterday. Or I should say the heavy snow did. I got as much snow off of the windshield as I could and it still broke the wiper. Also, today is Saturday and it's Aaron's birthday. Birthday to me. Yeah. So we had like an actual hot breakfast today. Benjamin came and woke you up because he was excited about your present. Yeah. <laughs> the joys of having small children when you want to sleep in like one day a year on your birthday. It just doesn't happen. All right, we have arrived at the garden center and as we were driving by, I noticed that they've got brand new annuals up here. So our 10 day forecast, even though today and tomorrow 39 is the high, the rest of the days are in the mid to high 40s. We're still dipping below freezing, but if you have these in protected spots, like the ones I planted on our front porch, they're doing fantastic. Ooh, I kind of like that one right there with the dark eye. That's really pretty. It's called apple blossom. Oh, mercy. Somebody has got to, somebody has got to not bring me down here. <laughs> That'd be you. And then it looks like this cart, there's some pansies. Yep. You can't even get them in the ground right now. Look at this. Yeah, but we can do pots. Oh, well, That's okay. all we need. Pots. Nice. So we should probably run in and say hi, but I just wanted to hop out here quick. You see right behind the greenhouse there, see all of those tall things? Those are trees tied up. So they're probably gonna, it's gonna take them a few days to untie trees, but we can at least see what's here. Yeah, tag some things. Yep. What's up? Okay. <laughs> We are here to tag some trees. Oh, you are cleaning your desk. Bravo. Oh, you're real funny, <laughs> you know that? You're hilarious. Okay, I've got the permanent marker, but we've got to stop off at the potting shed and get some soul tags. Oh, it's bright. <laughs> what kind of shoes did you wear? Oh, proper ones, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going out to mark the trees. Oh, choke cherry, well, very nice. Our always wears the most appropriate shoes ever. I do. Look at, look at all these trees. Oh my word. Yeah. Look at all of them. How many of them are red points? <laughs> uh, well, there's uh, hundreds of them that are red points, but we have 577 trees out here. Ooh. That's our, our, just our first load. 577. Yeah. Can we fit that many on our property, Erin? I think so. <laughs> oh, let me grab the tags quick. Erin, I also need to look for a tree for your mom, for their back fence line. She said she'd like something that grows a little bit wider than tall to okay. kind of mask what's behind their fence. So we'll be looking on the lookout for that too. Are you gonna get any red points? I have no idea. We should go easy on the red points at yeah, this point. Yeah, we've got lots of red point maples. Most of the trees that are on these pallets are red point maples. I do see some sensation box elders though. They have a very distinct look on their trunks. Um, and they're great trees for our area. They are an Acer, 
Um, so they are in the maple family, grow 30 by 25. We have one of these in the backyard, actually, the back formal garden, and they get the most gorgeous color in the fall. But anyway, most of the trees here are red points because that's where they tie them off. There's like a little bar that runs that way. Oh, you know what? There's other things in here, Erin. There's a purple robe locust. I've always wanted one of these. They look like a giant wisteria. Look how pretty oh, that is. Yeah. They do get thorns though. So it's like rose thorns almost. Do you see those? It'll be kind of, I don't know. Careful? Yeah. <laughs> I have trouble with thinking about our new space. I have trouble thinking about where small trees would go. To me, it's like I want it to be like a park. Like I'm thinking 30 years in the road, sure. down the road. Uh -huh. And all I can think of is like, what are the biggest trees we can put out there? And then it seems you're like small thinking, trees have to come later. I don't know. You're thinking like for the big grassy area yeah. mostly though. Cause I'm th also thinking for the two corners we're going to plant up. Cause we can have kind of a mm -hmm. mishmash of whatever, like some big stuff, but also some smaller things. Yeah. But like, this is not a small tree. The purple robe locust grows 50 feet tall by 32 feet wide. Oh. That's a sizable. That is a good size tree. And there's also a ruby slippers maple over here. I saw stays a little bit smaller. So 20 by 20 and it has really pretty, what do they call those? Samaras, some samur, samurais, I don't know, helicopters. Don't you feel like um, it's easier to pick out the biggest things first and then put the smaller things around the big stuff? Uh, either way. Really? Uh-huh. How do you fit in a big thing after you've already filled up all the little things? I think you just do them in tandem. Hmm. Like you, you don't have to start with one. I mean, you could. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like how you start with bone structure. You do your winter structure first and yeah. then your winter structure and shade trees. And then you work down from there with smaller, like smaller trees, large shrubs, and then down to perennials and right. annuals and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think, I don't know, we have so much space to fill that I think we'll have enough area just to pop some stuff in. Okay. But one of my main goals today is to look at their fruit tree selection because I do have six at home, but we are going to put in a 10 tree orchard this year. So I've got room for four more. How did yours survive? Good. Over the I can already see the buds starting to swell oh. on mine. They're just in their nursery can, still sitting back behind our greenhouse. Um, and I've got two apricots, two peaches, that's four, a plum, um, a pear, and a pear. That's six. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'll probably, I might do apple, but I'll steer, steer clear of cherries because they're just so hard to keep bug free and keep the birds away from them. I don't want that headache. So there is a drain, but it's a drain that just goes to a tank. So once that tank fills up, <laughs> you have to put a pump in there and then you run uh, big tubes back behind to the actual drain that's behind the potting shed over here. It's efficient. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some thundercloud plums, autumn brilliance, service berry. So I think I'm just gonna show you guys a bunch of the trees here. I mean, there's really this time of year, not much to see in terms of <laughs> leaf structure and, and color and such, but it's always fun to look at tags. Autumn brilliance, service berry, I have one of these um, at the end of the west side pathway, 20 by 15, gorgeous fall color. So pretty. This is what my parents have in their entryway too. They have it kind of going over the entryway entrance. This might be one that I pick up. This is a pluary, so it's a plum cherry cross. Zone six, which we are technically a six now, but you do have to have, so I do have a plum at home. I think it is a Santa Rosa, if I remember right. Anyway, um, or you can plant a pluot, which is a plum apricot cross for pollination. Don't those look tasty? Also Fantasia nectarines. And these are freestone. Might be kind of fun to have one of those. And then there's the pluot. So you can see what those fruit look like. A lot darker in color. I'm gonna just try to go over these tags slowly. So you can pause if you want to, to do any reading. What you doing back there, Erin? Checking out the size of the pallets. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, cause we need to get a forklift. Yeah, so the other thing this spring, Erin is considering getting a forklift and downgrading the size of our tractor to a smaller one. There are so many different things that, like so many pros and cons to each machine that we could have. It is so bright out here. I'm just like yeah. needing to close my eyes. Need some sunglasses. Yeah, I'm usually like it's the snow. Woo, blinding. Um, so we find ourselves in need of something that can lift heavy pallets of soil and things like that and fertilizers, um, which our tractor just doesn't 
well, do. I, even if I were to go up to like the largest subcompact tractor, it still can only lift like 2,300 pounds. And I think that we need something that's, you know, closer to like 3,000 that yeah. can do 3,000. Um, Cause sometimes the pallets are wet or, yeah. or whatever. So. Which we have the four series tractor at our house right now, a three, the R3. And then Aaron had um, the guy that helps us out drop a four series off just so we could try it out. And it's just like barely doing it. Mm -hmm. And so it just doesn't feel like a good idea to upgrade, but yeah. to rather get a forklift that can handle all kinds of weight. Um, you can also use it to pop like fence posts out and stuff like sure. that, like we have been using our tractor. And then if we downgrade our tractor to something less expensive so that we can afford the forklift, <laughs> <laughs> then um, we can put a mowing deck on that smaller tractor and it's lighter weight, it won't chew up the grass. Um, and it'll still help us like with the bucket for mul um, spreading mulch and things like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's I hard when you get land, you start to you have to make those decisions on what kind of equipment, you know, you either have to hire out or people rent. doing things or rent what a pain. or you're going to yeah. buy equipment and then you have to try to decide what's the best equipment for all the things that yeah. you personally do. Mm -hmm. Cuz a lot of other people aren't, you know, accepting pallets of mulch and pallets of soil mm -hmm. and things and like that. And the machines have to have the ability to go on gravel too. Yeah. So right. Which the forklifts around here do. They do. You can make them to where they can they can handle it but yeah. anyway so that's just something that Aaron mostly is dealing with at the moment in the end you're gonna decide and I I, I don't even want to <laughs> be a part of it no. okay. <laughs> okay now we're getting into a couple of things that I think I know I want like a multi trunk autumn brilliance the one I have is a single trunk but I love these multis and I think it would be really pretty to put some of these out in the corners of the new property. Also the spring snow crab apple, which I do have one of these in multi-trunk form. Um, but these are a uh, sterile crab apple. So no crab apples are formed on this tree, but it blooms beautifully. It still gets quite large. I mean, and the blooms are huge. So these are a really wonderful tree. And I've noticed that the bark on mine looks a little more golden. So maybe this one, I mean, it does have a little bit more of a golden appearance to it, but that adds a little more interest. Okay, I am just getting my bearings right now on what is here. There's some more fruit trees here. It looks like a bunch of cherry stellas, Montmorency over here, uh, more red points. There's some prunes, apricots. So we've gotten the Italian prune here. The Wenatchee Moore Park Apricot. Isn't it crazy that we're out here looking at trees and there's just a snow floor? Ooh, these look yum. An elephant heart plum. Look at that. So it says, heart-shaped fruit is sweet and juicy. From red flesh is covered by smooth, dark reddish purple skin. Yum. And that's a zone five. Five through nine. Some little Crimson Queen Japanese maples right in here, tucked in. And some big bread point maples right here. I always loved receiving tree loads and then untying them just to see what their canopies were like because it was kind of like a surprise every time. Ah, uh, and some great big thundercloud plums. Those are huge. And here's my mom's stumpery. She has, um, just recently had some of the guys here working on um, like this arbor here. Not cool. And then placing these great big stumps. So I think she's going to plant some, uh, you know, like Semper Vivums and some things like that and then have some plants displayed out here. But it should be interesting. Before it was just pallets full of stone and, and things like that that we really weren't uh, doing much for this spot. So it'll be a kind of a fun area to come visit and see the evolution of it. I used to have raised beds back here with a greenhouse cover and I would grow some sort of crops and then it started to get too shaded by our maple here. Ah, uh, but you can see how tall those thundercloud plums are. Those are massive. And they're really nice trees for quite a number of years, but when they get older, they do get a little bit ratty. Um, we did plant one uh, in our corner garden area where we've got the fountain. Uh, and I think it'll be a really nice tree there. 
and it'll probably, I mean, so long as it gets proper pruning and enough water, it should stay nice for a long time. We've got some more peaches here, Red Haven. And these are a freestone variety. There's Bing cherries. Really popular. Utah giant cherry. And a tilt, Tilton apricot. Ooh, and here is a stellar pink dogwood. 20 feet tall by 20 foot spread. Beautiful. This is a Louisa crab apple. So a weeper right there. 10 feet tall by 12 feet wide. More of an ornamental. And I love these. I need to have some Paul Scarlet Hawthorns. I'll probably tag some of these. And I really wish that tree companies wouldn't put red tags on their trees. They used to never do that. But it makes them appear that they're sold because that's always the color of sold tags. So anyway, they're just ID tags. But these are so beautiful. 22 feet tall, 20 foot spread, zone four. And beautiful, like big clusters of flowers. And the fruit isn't very thick on these. Birds usually clean them right up. So I will be tagging at least one of those. Emerald Avenue Hornbeam, zone five, 40 by 28. Look at that fall color. Chanticleer pear, which I just pruned on mine not long ago. And there's also an aristocrat pear, 40 by 28. So the uh, Chanticleer that I pruned on, I brought the branches inside and they bloomed beautifully as forced branches early. And we have a Snow Beauty white peach here. I have one of these ready to go in the orchard at home already. And these are freestone. Ooh, here's some big, nice maples. Red sunset maple. Look at the root balls on these things. They're huge. A tulip tree, which I always thought would be really interesting to have, but people, I, when I said I was gonna get one last year or year before or something, people were like, do not do it. They are really messy. And I don't know if that's true or not, but they do get a nice, Beautiful bloom on them and they grow big, 60 by 30. Aaron would really like this, the size anyway, for sure. Running into some pear trees, so there's a Bartlett pear here and a Sensation Red Bartlett pear. That's beautiful, look at that. And there's a whole bunch of apple trees. There's Red Delicious, Macintosh, uh, Fuji, Golden Delicious, Honeycrisp, Pink Lady, and then some smaller uh, plum trees, Big Sis Plum. Planted one of these behind the gazebo. They grow about 14 by 12. So a nicer size for a smaller area. I'll grab and steam apple in there. And then there's some choke cherries. Beautiful colored leaves, look at that. 25 by 20. So the leaves actually emerge green and then turn this purpley color during the summertime. Oh, and some beautiful crab apples. I really want some of these. The prairie fires are awesome. They don't get enormous. I mean, 20 by 20 is still a pretty good size. It's like a medium sized tree, but Oh, the blooms on this are so beautiful. Ooh, apricot plum cross, cotton candy, self-pollinating. Hmm, ooh, that might be a fun one to try. And then they also get four-in-one combo apples. So there's four different kinds of apples grafted onto the same tree. So there's Granny Smith. Um, let's see what the other ones are. Fuji, Gala, and golden delicious so what a fun way to have multiple different varieties if you don't have space to put in you know more than one tree um, it's fun to have that option okay we've got royal raindrops crab apple there's quants and cherries in here and i'm kind of stuck hold on oh, oh here's the pixie miniature peaches I planted one in a square gray container a couple years ago and it's still doing well. It had peach leaf curl last year um, and so hopefully we get on top of that, but it's still like doing it and looking healthy. Alberta peach, there's a Harcot apricot over here and some absolutely gorgeous witch hazels. So there's an Arnold Promise, which I have behind our chicken coop. It's already in bloom here. And I think I need to have this one. This is a Diane witch hazel. Look at the beautiful color on that. Oh my goodness. There's also some coral burst crab apples, which would look awesome in big containers. A uh, lollipop, proven winners, look at this. Isn't that exciting? I have one of these in our garden. It's planted in front of our gazebo and I need to dig it out this year and replant it. So there's just an enormous amount going on back here. And I might just have to think about it a little bit too and decide 
what exactly we want to do. I am such a visual person and I have a really hard time like actually penciling in varieties that I want to put in. I always have in mind like, oh, I would love to have, you know, like I know I want Autumn Brilliant Service Berries popped in here and there, but where they're gonna actually go, I don't know. <laughs> um, it just kind of has to evolve as as time goes on and as that space kind of starts taking shape. So I've lost Aaron, I don't know where he went. I think I'll go track him down and we will start tagging some things out here. What is this? Is that too many trees? <sighs> Maples, birch, magnolia. Can we do magnolia here? I well, we can do trees. we can do um, the deciduous type. That is an evergreen type, but it says it's a zone six. Okay. So I think we'll have to just hit it with soil instead of fire. Redbud, crabapple. Crabapples are small, aren't they? Uh, those are accent trees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the tu 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 tupelo? Tupelo. I don't know, it has a real pretty fall color. It's bright red, like a burning bush. Cherry, willow, um, Cardinal Royal Mountain. Ash. Ash, oh, I didn't see the ash. It looked like a scribble after that. Oh. <laughs> How dare you. Linden. My handwriting is top notch. So yeah, looks awesome. I think we have a ton of space out there. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll have any trouble putting all those trees out there. <laughs> So I think what we decided to do, because as I was looking around out there, I noticed that we do have a lot of the trees that are already out there, um, and we kind of like some different things. So um, I think we will take some fruit trees home today, as well as maybe, I have a list here, fruit trees that Diane, Witch Hazel, the Autumn Brilliance Service Berry that's multi-trunk. Um, but then I put together a wish list of trees that I'm gonna give to my mom, and she'll keep her eyes open on her next tree load to see if she can tag on some of these. And it's likely we won't get all of these. Likely. Order. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, pre-orders are put in in the fall and winter months and my mom put her order in long time, uh, excuse me, a long time ago. Um, so we'll get what we can this year and kind of go from there. And Aaron's really wanting to get some trees that grow massive, like... Legacy trees. Like 75 to 100 feet tall. And nothing in the Schmidt catalog gets that big except for a couple of different elms, which we don't want because we don't want those elm seeds. Um, and such. I would rather have shorter trees that don't have seeds. Yeah. So that aren't messy. So anyway, I think that's a really good way to go about it. So let me show you this list right here. So as we go down this list, I think we'll just pop a picture up and maybe some stats of the trees. Would that be easy to do? That'd be super easy. Okay. Because they're also pretty. So we'll start at the top here. Firefall maple. Uh, there's a marmo maple, which I we've had these in the nursery before and they're so beautiful. The leaves are gorgeous. They're huge. Celebration Maple, Royal Frost Birch, which I had a trio of these in our last garden, Renaissance Oasis Birch, which I think was more of a newer offering, if I remember right, but it had beautiful fall color, the Edith Vogue Magnolia. Um, now, this is an evergreen type. It is a zone six. We typically can't grow evergreen magnolias here, but I think it'd be worth a shot. A uh, Katsura Tree. Uh, which got, gets quite big. Uh, their pink pom poms red bud was new in 2018, so I'm not, I may not be able to get that one, but the blooms are gorgeous. Forest pansy red bud, which mom, you probably, I don't know, did you have some of those out there and I just missed them? The forest pansies are on our next load. Okay, because that's one that you typically get anyway. Yeah. Okay. There's a pink heartbreaker red bud there, a Donald Wyman crab apple, which I'm not positive, but I think that this might be the variety that we have in our front yard that I love so much. We do have fire blight in it, um, in ours, but I would love to get some new ones started on the new property. Cardinal crab apple, Indian magic, my mother-in-law and uh, father-in-law have this tree right outside their uh, dining room window and it's absolutely, it's magic. <laughs> it's a perfect name for it. <laughs> um, perfect purple crab apple. Uh, and I really tried to go with a mix of different leaf colors and bloom colors and bloom times. So there's a showtime crab here. Afterburner Tupelo, which I'm not super familiar with, but the fall color in the catalog at least looks amazing, and it's got a really neat shape. Persian Parosha, slow, slow growers, but amazing color in the fall. First Blush Cherry. Oh, going back to the Parosha, Mom, your guys' is, uh, Parosha downstairs, yeah. does it burn at all? No. It doesn't. It's just a slow grower. It's slow growing, but the fall color is just like none other. It's just the beech trees that burn. 
Right. Basically. Right. I didn't yeah. know if Proches kind of were in that same kind of yeah. category. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A couple of weeping willows, because you guys know I love the weeping willows. We've got two on our, well, three technically on our property, two of which are, um, I show more often and they're amazing. We do have to treat these every year though, so they don't get borers, which is a pain. And I tried to stay away from that for most of these, but I'm willing to do it for willows because they're awesome. Uh, Cardinal Royal Mountain Ash has beautiful clusters of red berries in the fall and winter. Glen Levin Linden, nice big linden tree. And then these down here, the Prairie Fryer Crab and the Autumn Brilliant Service Berry are kind of like medium sized trees and I want to get uh, multiple so I can group them together. I think it'd be really pretty. So I know this list is massive, um, but you kind of have to order heavy this time of year and then maybe expect to get half, possibly. So now I think what we'll do is maybe, um, Aaron, do you mind pulling the truck around through the belly sure. or drive through yeah. And we might just pull our fruit trees and take them so that they don't have to take care of them or display them or that sort of thing. We'll just take them home. Put them with the rest of our pile of plants that are ready to plant as soon as the snow's gone. I don't need any of these sold tags after all. I forgot we had a stroller in here. Oh, and the little giraffe, little plush giraffe in there. Yeah, Aww. and junk mail. Do you think that, um, well, we still have to have that back there, right? Yeah, I'll just put it back. There's plenty of room. Thing. Yeah, okay. You shouldn't be lifting that. I got the green light from the doctor. He said, don't go lift a fountain, but you're good to go on hmm. everything else. So just everybody know that. <laughs> First tree load of 2021. First of many. So exciting. I think this snow is gonna be gone in like a day or two. Yep. It's just really melting quickly. Yeah. Oh, that's just so exciting. I miss this part of being down at the garden center. I loved getting new loads of stuff and seeing all of like the fresh blood, the new, new plants. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You gotta drop me off quick. My mom said there's some really cool stuff in the greenhouse. You wanna run around front with the truck and I'm gonna run to the greenhouse? Sure. Okay. I see the anemones and oh my word. Harmony orchid anemone, isn't that gorgeous? I might, might need to have a couple of those. They're so pretty. Oh yeah. Also, I'm noticing these primrose, which have been one of my favorites because of the double ballerina cream. Aren't those gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna get a few things out here and then we're gonna head inside. Aren't those pretty? Yeah. And then these couple of anemones. I'm thinking I can plant a little grouping of containers by the hellebore containers up front yeah. for some early color. Okay, well we are heading back home because I didn't realize how much time I was taking and we told uh, Sue, Aaron's mom, that we would just be a couple hours. So we'll have to go back down and look at house plants another day, but I got those few beautiful uh, things out of the greenhouse with some really beautiful color. Aren't those awesome? Awesome. Ah, and then the trees. So we'll get home and get them all unloaded and then I'll kind of just give you guys another look at what we ended up with today. How'd it go? Oh. Hi baby girl. How she are you doing? She's been so good. Good. She's a good girl. How's it going Benjamin? Good. Looks like you've been having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's clean up. Yeah, well, hey, <laughs> you're speaking my language, buddy.
Russell's checking out today's haul. So again, the fruit trees we ended up with are the Honeycrisp Apple, which is this one here, and then we've got the Fuji Apple, the Cotton Candy Aprium, which is the Apricot Plum Cross, and then the Flavor Top Nectarine, right there. And then we've got the Multi-Trunk uh, Autumn Brilliant Service Berry, and then all of these beautiful things right here. So I got two of the anemones, I got six of the primrose and six of these daffodils called minnow. And I think I will, I was gonna pot them up today. I think I'll wait for another day to pot those up. So I'm gonna put those in the greenhouse. And then we've got the Diane witch hazel. So let me get a close up on these blooms. Boy, I hope you can see those, how I can see them. They look kind of dark in the screen but they are beautiful. And you can see that the trees are budded up, but they haven't broken dormancy quite yet, which is perfect. And that's the thing with fruit trees here. Because we get so many of our trees from the western side of our state, which we are in Oregon, eastern Oregon and western Oregon are incredibly different places. Um, it's nice to bring them in early because if we waited any longer, they'll probably start to break dormancy over on the western side of the state because it's a lot warmer, much more mild. Uh, and if we bring them in at the wrong time and it freezes here really deep, then it can kill all their blossoms and we won't have fruit for that year. So if we can bring them in early enough and let them break dormancy on our schedule, then we're much more likely to have fruit, at least for the first year. And some people um, tell you not to let your trees or fruit or whatever set for the first year and let them build a root system. These these are older trees we let them fruit the first year it doesn't seem to hurt them one bit and it's kind of nice to you know when you're planting an orchard to have something something to taste that first year now I want to just give you a quick look at the other fruit trees that I have back behind the greenhouse and then I think I'm gonna go in it's getting a little chilly all that snow came off the roof today so it's way deeper right here oh well, let's see Be here Woo. so I have the Santa Rosa plum right here oh reach back oh doesn't that look delicious we've got a snow beauty white peach look at the buds on this one you can tell we've already kind of had a warm-up got this sensation red bartlett pear the heart caught apricot and there's two others back here we've got the tilton apricot and an Alberta peach right here. And you can see we have so many things back here. We've moved like the pots that were from around the gazebo back here in preparation for the greenhouse. I've got three Corinthian, or not three, five. Five Corinthian lindens back here that we're gonna place and plant this spring. Lots of fun activity. Hey Russell. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's not quite as fun to look at trees when they don't have leaves on them, um, but it's exciting uh, just to start preparing for the season and kind of like seeing those plans that we've been thinking about start to come together a little bit more, like piece by piece. Um, we'll see these projects come together. I was telling Aaron, like I know I shouldn't wish time away, uh, but I'm really looking forward to see what our garden looks like at the end of the season. After we have a chance to get the cut flower garden set back up and the orchard planted and the greenhouse in and some of the things buttoned up that are kind of like, they're all over the place right now, a little bit chaos. Um, it's gonna be a really exciting year in the garden a lot going on. So the more that we can do early like this and kind of start getting get things gathered, the better, the smoother it will go, I think, for us. We'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.